All right, today we have a presentation on attacking soccer. I'm super excited for it. And my focus is about how to make decisions when attacking in a systematic way. So I'm going to try to wrap this up in 15 minutes. Be brief. The first slides are set up. Then I'll hit you with the main idea, and then we'll see some specific examples. I'm going to be going fast, so at any point, just pause the video if you want to look at the slide in greater detail. Okay, so when we're attacking the goal, there's plenty of options in terms of combination play, and all this stuff works. So when it comes to the pro level, how are they always, aside from just being amazing players, how are they always making the correct choice as a group? It's almost like they're psychically communicating about which group action they're going to do. And how they do it is they have the same mental framework to make the choice. And specifically, they're reading the reactions of the defenders to make their movements. So here's the basic idea. Guardiola, famous team talk. When they jump, the space is there. They don't jump, you're alone. What does he mean? Let's see in bigger detail. So the first big point I have to make is after a transition, everything is easier. The best moment to attack is always after a transition because the spaces between the defenders, the horizontal and vertical spacing will be big. They haven't shifted back yet. And often you can just play the ball straight through. Just time the through ball in, whether it's blind side run or same lane running in the same gap as the through ball, you often can just play the ball right back through. So we're not really going to focus on moments after transition in this video. We're going to say, what if there's no transition and the defense is set up? How do we unlock a defense that's organized, not one that's unorganized because of a transition? So our goal will be, how can we play the ball in behind the back line for a high percentage shot or high percentage cross? The back line will be set up. They'll be compact vertically. They'll be mobile. The only way we're going to have success is if we can pull a defender off the back line. Now, we're going to have to do this quickly because when one guy steps up, they're going to cover the space and he might shift back. So we have to make our decision and make the action very fast. Timing is critical. So the question is, how can we make the guy jump? How can we make a defender step off the back line? The answer is the ball. Whether it's through the dribble, the pass, or even anticipation of a pass, that's what will make them jump. So our plan is to overload the guys up top and then see what they do. Why must we create an overload? If we don't have players up top near the back line, then when they jump, there's no one that's going to make the through run. So if we have a lot of guys up top, if we're playing five wide and someone jumps and steps up, we have guys there that immediately can run into the open space and hurt them. So get five wide, read the defensive reaction. Here's what it looks like, getting five players high. Visualize here now, if any one of these players steps up and exposes space behind them, someone can make the run in. Notice the starting position is not on the offsides line, but maybe four yards off that. So you can make a run at full speed, and you're already off the line for a ball to feet pass. Different ways to get into this shape. We're not really focused on that in this video. You can bring both fullbacks up high, the Liverpool method. You can bring one fullback high, tuck one in, city method. It doesn't really matter. But when you get there, it's all about reading what the defense does. I broke it down into four situations. They're either going to step early and man mark you before a pass. They're going to step at the correct time and deny your ability to turn. They're going to step late, as in you already got to turn. You're on the dribble, and then they step, or maybe they don't step at all. Early, correct, late, or no step. These are the four situations. So in each of these four situations, you read what they're doing, and then we have specific solutions for each situation. Let's break them down. First, if they step early, they've already exposed the space behind them before the pass. So we don't need to pass ball to feet. We can already go straight into the through ball. We can even go ball over top in this situation. The space is already there, so we can just play directly into it. It's all about timing. Finally, if they step correct, as they arrive when the ball gets there, they deny your turn, we can still play the space behind them, but we're going to need more people involved. Maybe a third man run 
delayed one two or often teams will just try it again they'll circulate the ball switch field trade positions reset the runs different guys make runs and they go again and again until the defense will make an incorrect reaction and then they'll go what are other incorrect reactions late step so they let us turn they let us engage the back line on the dribble and then someone steps off the back line this is right for the one two give and go or just creating a passing angle using the dribble and just finding a free player way easier to do than creating space for your shot because all you have to do is poke a little five to seven yard through ball in that's easier than ripping a 20 yard shot and finally the last situation no one steps they just go back to their goal it's pretty simple we want to take that space and go immediately to the final action which is a shot or a through ball for the one touch cross or finish so let's look at examples and bring all these to life okay first situation how can they mess up they're going to man mark before the pass is even hit here the fullback is playing man marking holding hands with the winger the space behind him is already open so we don't need to play ball to the winger's feet we immediately can just boom play it into the space behind and if he can time his run as the defender is stepping forward you can gain a step on that man here we see an example arsenal we're man marking the fullback's already up He's anticipating ball to feet, and so if you can make your cut right as the ball comes, and he's maybe stepping forward, cheating, trying to pick ball off to feet, you can get behind him and get a yard and get right in. This also can happen centrally. A central defender can step up and man mark early too, exposing the space, and now players from outside in or inside out can run into this space. Here we have a maybe like an attacking mid who's gotten high and he's checking towards the ball. Notice the defender is coming right with him and he's aware of this. He's walking the dog, pulling the guy off the line, opening up the gap right here. The winger knows about it too. He's ready to time his movement and on the pass, he hits a double cut, cuts off the back foot, catches the defender flat and beats him into the space. A massive gap, an easy through ball. This is a different moment, literally the same game. Both of these resulted in goals. It's almost the same play. Center back comes up, trailing the attacking mid. He knows what he's doing. He's creating the opening. A double movement cut. Look at his body position low, cutting off that foot. Notice the fullback slightly cheating over there. And then we get a step. Both of these resulted in goals. And if you like step overs, this is the perfect situation because as you drag your guy, here you know the space behind you is open you know someone's making a run to it so a ball coming to you you know works better as a through ball and you just let it go maybe you spin and try to follow the play up beautiful okay what if they don't jump early and they move as the pass moves and they arrive right when the pass gets there and they deny our turn there's still going to be space open behind the defender briefly before the back line shifts and we might be able to access that space. So here's a sophisticated way on a third man run. We need two other players. Since this guy can't turn and play into the space, he can drop the ball off for one guy to make the pass and another guy makes the run. It's all about timing here. If both of these guys try to make a run, then the ball has to go back and circulate. One of the guy has to check towards and one of them has to make the run. If they both check towards and nobody makes the run, then there's no one to play there. So you have to get it right one guy has to check towards and one guy has to make the run and the pass has to be one touch here's an example okay we see a central player checking towards the ball the defender he has not jumped yet but as the pass arrived boom he's arrived and there he is trying to blow up the first touch poke the ball out okay the space behind has opened up a player an offensive player is already there to run into it so the guy who hit the first pass he moves after he passes receives the wall pass straight back look this guy barely got the wall pass off because of the pressure on him and then it's open to put the ball in first man receives the second man puts in the one touch through ball and the third man times the run beautiful example let's see another one pass in the first man defender stepping forward and it looks like this guy he's even slightly aware of the situation 
and trying to already break down, but it's kind of too late. The space is open, someone's making the run, and another guy is checking under to receive. So he lets the ball off, another guy has pulled the spaces there, and the ball is played in. He's only beaten him by half a yard, the shoulder is in, but that was enough to get the shot off and get the goal here. There are other ways to get this done too. Maybe you can't play forward, so you just play the ball back. If you can get the defender chasing you, following you, exposing the space, you've basically created the early jump situation, and then you can t -t double cut on the pass and beat him back in. So it's the idea of the one-two, but uh, you might have to pull the guy. There might be two or three touches between your pass back and making the cut. And finally, I don't have a lot of examples of this, but what most teams do is if the defense has not made a mistake, they circulate the ball, switch the field, try again, see if the defenders on the other side will make one of these mistakes. Like here's one, stepping up late. So we've already been able to receive turn and thus attack the back line on the dribble, and then a guy is pulled out. This is like the last situation, but now the guy on the ball can be the one that just plays it into the space. Two options here. I have the one-two, or just simply passing it straight in, just a through ball and a blindside run. To me, what would differentiate it is if the defender is stepping up just vertical and straight, kind of making the pass through tough, this one I would check towards off ball and try to offer the one-two for the guy on the ball. If he's curving his run, maybe blocking the one-two and approaching diagonally, then the through ball is there. You can just play it straight in. Some examples, we have a guy stepping up. Notice we're already attacking him on the dribble. Rather than make the run here, we check towards, we draw in both defenders, and we play through the one-two. All right, here's another situation. And check out this guy's approach. He's stepping up late, and clearly he's coming from here. He's coming diagonally. And so both runners can run in diagonally, and the pass can be diagonally as well. This is where you use the skill of the dribble to maybe make the guy bite, take that extra touch to create it. And finally, here's a common pattern of play where the, pay, the play is switched out to a wide winger. He receives to feet, and thus the fullback is dragged out diagonally because he was starting on the inside, and thus this inside-out blindside run is very high percentage to work there. Right? So he's stepping out diagonally because the play switched, so he has to, so that this inside-out run is wide open if you time it correctly. Right? And look at the high percentage cross there. Okay. Finally, what if no one steps up and all of the defenders are just retreating towards their goal? Often this will happen if they're overloaded, if it's a 3v2 or a 4v3. Okay? Um, it's all about timing the run and making the right, right the correct choice for the run. I've tried to show the inside lane here with the center line. If the ball is near you, it's correct to want the ball to feet in the same lane. And if it's ball far, as seen here, the blindside run will work. Here's an example of making the wrong choice. If it's ball near and the guy tries to run blindside, the through ball won't work because it's close to the defender or the pass will have to be moving away towards the run rather than diagonally into it. Same thing over here, if it's ball far and you want ball to feet, there's very low angle for him to put the ball in front of you without this guy picking it off or were you able to take a positive touch into the player. Here's some quick examples here. Notice the ball is kind of on the far side of the gap. Okay, so rather than run straight and want ball to feet, he runs in behind and he can meet it perfectly in the middle of the gap. I'm saying if the ball was here, he should run straight and try to receive the ball on his front foot in the same lane. And here's that same lane situation. All right, here was the ball before the pass. Okay, and since it's ball near, there's tons of angle out here. The ball can be played in front of the guy making this outside in run. However, if the ball was here on the purple dot, this angle would be much lower, and I think the correct choice would then be to run in behind the guy. So that's all I got for today. We see jumping means the space is opened up, and not jumping is allowing us to turn. Read the decisions. Train it in training. 
Start from easy situations and increase the speed and variation and have success.